Hi, this is Dr. Simcha Shapiro in Israel. You know, a lot of people have been asking me a lot of questions lately about Corona. And the truth is, is it's all very confusing. And I myself didn't really understand why are governments and World Health Organizations reacting so dramatically to something that seems like it's like the flu. And so I decided I'd investigate it and understand it a little bit better. And one of the things I realized was even the news sources weren't really writing about things and explaining them in such a way that explained why the dramatic reaction. So here's what I found out that helps to make things more sensical. Is coronavirus really like the flu? Well, yes, it is really like the flu in the symptoms that it presents with. People who have a mild case of corona will have fever, cough, a general feeling like they don't feel well, they feel flu-like. The thing is, is when we look at infectious diseases, they rate infectious diseases in two different ways. They rate them based on how contagious they are and based on how deadly they are. So let's take something like the flu. The seasonal flu, the influenza virus, in the year of 2017 through 2018, which is the last time we have updated data, in the United States, about 61,000 people died, and worldwide, 300 to 600,000 people died. Now, let's compare that to the coronavirus. The coronavirus is about two to three times more contagious than the flu. And when you look at those numbers with the flu, that represented less than a tenth of a percent of the number of people who were infected with the flu died, those numbers. So the coronavirus, one to three percent of the people who get it die. That means that the coronavirus is twice as contagious and somewhere between 10 and 30 times as deadly. That means the overall impact, if you take those two numbers together, that the coronavirus should be somewhere between 20 and 60 times as impactful as the flu. Now let's take those to the numbers of 2017, 2018. That means if we take the middle, not 20 and not 60, let's take 40%, the middle, 40 times, that the coronavirus would be 40 times as impactful on a global level as the flu. That means in the United States, about two and a half million people could potentially die from coronavirus and between 12 and 24 million people worldwide. Now that's something that's worth getting dramatic about. That's why governments are getting very dramatic. In fact, those types of numbers, the medical system can't handle that. That's just the number of people who die from it. But many times that number of people could have very severe illness that they'll recover from and they would require hospitalization. That's why when we look at a country like Italy, which were not very aggressive with their measures, what happened was the coronavirus spread very quickly and their medical system is completely paralyzed and overwhelmed trying to deal with it. And the entire country and all the school system, the entire con economy is shut down. The mm. rest of the world is looking at that and saying, we don't want that to happen to us. And that's why governments and World Health Organizations are taking such dramatic measures. This isn't a joke. It's not a government conspiracy. Every health organization locally, based on their government's decisions, are updating recommendations almost daily about what to do. It's very important to check on those recommendations and listen to them. If they recommend quarantine, this is not a joke. Do it. Because today, in our world today, we have something that we've never had before any time in history. Between the cooperation between the World Health Organization and local health organizations, and cooperation and communication between governments and technology, we have the ability to do something we've never been able to do with a, this type of outbreak before. We have the ability to slow its spread and hopefully mitigate the impact worldwide. But it requires the cooperation, not just of governments, but of its citizens. It requires your cooperation and my cooperation. So let's make sure that we listen to the recommendations and we each do our part to help keep this under control as best as possible. Wishing you lots of health. Dr. Shapiro.